Like I said, final stages. And what we're getting ready to do right now is prepare the cylinder heads for the tube. This is Aircraft Chrome Molly 4130. Comes with an epoxy coating on it, and I have to wire brush that off to get my clearance right. You can see it dark and shiny there. I'll go ahead and shine at the link once I get it figured out. But this is how you do it. You take a dial caliper and you put it on top of the head bolt hole uh, boss and you measure down till it stops which would be deck level surface of the head I'm coming up with 2.955 now this is the point right here where you gotta know that what you're looking for is this tube does not need to be the length of that hole it actually needs to be a little shorter on both sides so that when the bolt holes tighten down it ain't pushing against the tube and disturbing it so to be on the safe side at 2955 I'm going to minus at 50 thousandths that right there is going to assure me I'm not going to have a problem so I'm going to bring it to 2900 okay then I'm going to lock it down then typically it's real simple all you do is take the tube I put it at the top let the top of the caliper anchor off and use the bottom as a point like a scribe okay and make my mark you'll plainly be able to see it then I take a tubing cutter this is one I got at Walmart for a few bucks and I'll cut it using that cutter and I'll have beveled edge I gotta cut four of them first though I gotta go over here and wire brush it really good and remove the epoxy then I'll make the four marks two for each head clip them and then I'll be ready to use JB Weld epoxy um, I'll put it on and that'll be the last thing I do here this evening let it sit up for about eight hours, come out here, and then I'll blend it off, and man, they're good to go, okay? So anyway, I'll go ahead, get the tubes cut, and then I'll let you watch me set them up, press fit them in, and what the tubes look like when they're installed and pressed. It actually looks pretty cool. With this particular chromoly tubing I'm using, it's about 50 thousandths thick or four, no it's 40 thousandths thick you cannot use a stud a head stud with this chrome molly tube now I do have a different material a brass that is a really thin wall that I could put in there for a head stud it really doesn't make no difference because if you think about it if the tube is in the center of the bolt hole it don't matter what, what pressure you put on the top or the bottom. It's just if they're using head bolts, just maybe psychological reasons, I'll go ahead and use the 4130. So I'm going to go ahead and cut them and get ready and show you how I put the tubes in and how it's pressed and all that and go to the next stage, which is going to be cleaning everything up. All right. At this point, this is where it gets... Uh, actually the more nervous of any part of it because everything's done raw material removed shapes been formed and now is the part where um, you go in there and do the finessing you know the light blending taking any bumps and leveling uh, I'll be doing it I usually pick a dull aluminum cutter I don't want to remove material there's my dull cutter and it's just going to be touching the little spots and then I'll switch finally to the finger but the reason that this gets me nervous and y'all will go through this too those of you out there that are ignorant enough to do this <laughs> is uh, this is where the bad news happens what I mean is it can't ever bust through in the beginning it always has to wait to the very end when you're right at the end and you're almost done that's when you bust through I've used my sonic checker I've done the math I have took every precaution and went through this with a fine tooth comb 
But sometimes you get a casting, it don't matter, even if it's an aftermarket head or whatever. When you hit one this hard, which this was hit majorly hard, trying to utilize that 194 valve, because I couldn't put a 202 in here. Hell, even a 2-inch valve, you'd have to cut so much of the seat out that you couldn't do this shape thing that I'd done. Remember when I went in there and trimmed the seat, pulled the radius, and then went with the angles? You couldn't do that with a 2-inch because by the time you did it, you'd cut so much of the seat away that it would collapse. Right now, the seat ain't a problem. But this is where it gets hairy when you're leveling it because it's not paper thin. It's just this is where the problems occur. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and begin the process uh, of just touching spots in there that have a little bit of a hump, bringing them down with the... Um, uh, the egg and then I'll the, the reason I switched to the finger cutter is to take the rough carbide marks out to make it kind of blend because I do not stone these polish the intakes or any of that I don't usually polish the exhaust I'm not going to spend much time after I blend them I might take a couple of old sand rolls and just maybe knock the high spots and the edges because it's just flat out a waste of time. And the, what I want to say on that is, would you rather me make it look pretty and spend hours polishing the exhaust, making them look really pretty and shiny, or would you rather me spend that time removing raw material and shaping the port? I think that's a no-brainer right there. Um, I try to give everybody the best value I can, but it comes to a point that you have to make these decisions or, you know, basically when I get down below $10 an hour on a project, it's no fun anymore. I can make that work in, um, at McDonald's or AutoZone. So anyway, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and start. I was trying to look. I know that with a camera, um, the reflection, it's hard to really go in there and uh, see how I'm leveling the bump. So I basically, I can't. I, I, with this camera, and it's a good one. By the way, it's a Panasonic GS500 3CCD with a couple of different lenses. I think it's done a pretty good job of showing it. And as I learn more about it, the clarity will be better. But basically it's it's a feel thing i'm actually taking my finger and feeling it and i know if i can if i can't if i can barely feel it there's a little bit right there there's no way you can see it so i'm gonna go ahead clean it up i will show you on the exhaust some cleaning up i do i'll hit spots basically that's it get ready to slam the tubes in it and uh let it dry and then i pressure test the head Every stage four and up gets pressure tested. It's 60 pounds. More on that. When I say finishing touches, basically what I'm referring to is you see where I went in here and the bowl area and I took this and blended that. It leaves little devits on this area. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's zoom in here. I'm doing is picking off where the runner left off. Very slow speed, just letting the carbide down. Okay, and um, all that's doing, all that's doing is just basically trying to level out the little humps and blends. Uh, remember, the smaller the burr, the more closely together the paddles are, the more that it will take, it won't take as much material out 
therefore it won't dig and leave the marks in it. And of course, then there's the finger cutter. But I'm just cleaning it up. Right here is where I'm, I mean, if, I, if it busts right here, I'm not surprised at all. There's a valley in there right above the spring perch, and I'm more than prepared to put some epoxy on it. It's okay. That ain't a problem because it is a non-pressurized area. Okay, just wanted to go over that and touch a couple more times. One of the things I wanted to go over here is the short turn radius on some of these heads. Of, this is a prime example. The LT1, it's got a real sharp, abrupt turn at the top. Now, the problem is when you go in there and port them and you pull the short turn back so that it ain't got overhang on the seat, you cut here and then you blend it, it makes a razor sharp big ridge on the top. And this is a hard area to get for the novice porter. Uh, the only way, there's a couple of ways to go about skinning this cat, but the best way I can think of to show you is you got to go back and forth turning the head around. Let me see if I can get you a view here. Really hard uh, with that light lit up the way it is, but I'll try. Anyway, I use a stone and it has to be rounded on the ends. And then what I do is go over on the top. Try to go over as far as I can with this edge rolling on the, the very outer edge and then I pull it in. Okay. What that's doing is that that's bringing down that big sharp edge, and I'm gonna back up and show you how I got how I got to do it. Okay, the trick here then, after you move it some right in here, is to turn the head around. Okay. The reason being is you can only get so far this way, so then you have to turn the head around, put it right here, and come and attack it from this end. Let's get you on this side. Now I'm gonna go in and use this same rounded end and let it overhang right on the um, edge where it was sharp pointed. Notice how I'm pulling, I'm making a circular motion like this. Okay, I'll have to repeat this motion as many as four or five times. See, we'll hit it again. I just turned it around the other way now, and I'm gonna go in here. It feels a little better. I can actually feel it rolling now. Put a sand roll on here and go back and forth. I'll show you in a 